Okay, so England are up and running under Steve Porthwick and they've got a win. And parts of it were, were quite good and then parts of it were a bit meh. Charlie, what did you what did you like and what did you not like? Meh is a uh, flawless description there, I think. Now the yes, <laughs> I think the size of the task that Steve Borthwick has taken on is is becoming more and more clear, isn't it? And I think it, you have to have you have to look at it as far as the component parts that he is getting he is addressing um with this England side. They were um fragile in in, in the scrum. They were pretty impotent around the mall. Um he's seems to be addressing that. The scrum was um superior to Italy's. The mall obviously carved out a lot of their uh, their attacking opportunities and their points, which um were seriously handy given how Italy had gone against France. I think the attack potentially in phase play took a took a step backwards but I think it, then you have to think that Owen Farrell and Marcus Smith had been on the pitch for all but I think half an hour um, accounting for Smith's yellow card in the second test in, in Australia and Smith's injury against South Africa all of the previous eight tests they had been on the pitch together so you're putting in a new midfield and this isn't jam tomorrow because that has certainly not been the rhetoric that, that Steve Borthwick is is trying to kind of implement um, but it's just a just realistic. That's just where England are. England are below this chasing pack. Eddie Jones was kind of trying to make the point and trying to stress that England were part of the chasing pack. I think going towards the World Cup, they, it's going to be pretty impressive if Steve Borthwick gets them up to speed. Um, but they have got that handy side of the draw. As far as the Six Nations, I think it's going to be a real dogfight in Wales with a lot of kicking, a lot of desperation. And I think they can potentially get close to France at home but you fear for them in Ireland, and that just is where England are. And the manifestation of that was in was in this performance against Italy, which was bitty, um, but encouraging if you if you scratch below the surface and look at the set piece improvements, look at the fact that he got two players with real with with X factor on the field. I would say in, in Jack Willis and, and Ollie Lawrence, and they enhanced England. Um, he wants to get Henry Arundel back for sure to give them a little bit more of that explosive pace. It is slowly coming together, but England supporters are going to have to be patient. And, you know, we have flagged this. It is worth remembering, too, that he's only been there for the best part of two weeks. You know, And there has been, even in that short period of time, from one game to the next, tangible improvements. And, yeah, I suppose there is any sort of betting man would fear for them in Dublin on the, on the last weekend of the Six Nations. But, the, but you know, they if they continue improving at this rate from, from one week to the second round, and if they continue that in Wales, they continue against France, they won't be, they won't, there won't be any pushovers in Dublin in that, in, that final, in that final game. And you know that they'll go with a plan, and you know that there'll be clarity, and you know that, you know, on a one-off game, maybe Borthwick and Simfield might have a bit of a master plan to sting the Irish. I don't know whether he listens to this podcast, Steve Borthwick. I doubt it. But Me too. He, d- he did mention oh, after the game, after the game on Sunday, he mentioned that Scotland, um, Ireland, France, Italy, importantly Italy, are have built momentum over this four-year cycle and, and looking, look really cohesive as far as what they're doing with the ball and what they have as far as a plan during games. England are starting afresh in some areas and I think we, we're going to get onto their late fades potentially that's a worrying habit obviously mm. but they look like a side that's sort of mentally burdened with taking on all this information and trying to put it out on the field and work into this plan that they that will get them um will get them kind of singing off the same hymn sheet eventually but it's a process and it's a process that's happening that's being played out against sides that are just further along and they nearly you know they nearly scraped scraped that win against Scotland they they, were, they weren't great in all, in all aspects, but did enough to, to get through that. Didn't quite, obviously. Um, and Italy came full of optimism. And, and, you know, and you know, fell short. England got, in, England got through what could have been a really, really awkward test and was looking to be an awkward test sort of when they faded um, during, the third, during the third and fourth quarter against a side that was spreading the ball again. I thought both had played all the right notes after it. So reading some of the quotes when he talked about small step forward. This is the first layer. He's really trying to lower expectations, isn't he? And, and right so, I think, because he sort of want, he doesn't want to be... He's not coming out with sort of bombast, bombastic quotes about what is going to happen with this England side. If, if we just focus on one selection in particular with Ollie Lawrence as well, he, he's not necessarily your classic inside centre, but obviously he can play 12 and, he, and he's got so much power as we saw with that great line break where I think he steamrolled over to Marcel Allen, was it? Mm. it what what did you like, Charles, about Loris' performance? And if if Kelly is 
Kevin's going to be out for this Six Nations. We know that now. Is, is this the combination that you want to see England stick with necessarily yeah. moving forward? I think it is, yeah. I think that against Scotland, certainly England were found wanting in the sort of explosive ball carrying areas of their of their attacking play it was again she had to shoulder a lot of that responsibility against Scotland and it, and it was similar against similar against Italy to be honest I mean the, there have been improvements there with the inclusion of Ollie Lawrence and he certainly gave that that midfield a focal point and he gave the forwards a target and he gave um he, he was an option for England to generate more attacking momentum but there's not enough there, really. When it slowed down against Italy again, it was a, a sort of let's give it to Genj or let's give it to Sinclair and and hope that they can conjure something a little bit spectacular. I do think that England are still one or two, probably one to be honest, a, a real heavy duty ball carrier short. I mean, the, it's it's very unfashionable opinion, but I will maintain that I still think there's a place in this side for Billy Vunipola. I really do at number eight. I think that. He has um, his pitfalls, he has his shortcomings in, in other areas of the game, of course, but in terms of carrying in the in the, in the the sort of close quarters, in the tight exchanges, there aren't many better number eights um, in the world, to be honest, in terms of the real, the real tight areas and running into opposition forwards, tying them in and still getting go forward. And that's where England are struggling a little bit. When it... When, when they get front football, when they get momentum, when they play at pace, they look great. The attacking shape comes in, but with, with the greatest respect, that's, the, that's similar to of most teams. When most teams get that, they look great. It's how you get that. And England, at times, struggle to sort of generate that momentum. And that's why, as well as many other things, that's one of the reasons why they sort of look to kick more, I think, in the attacking 22. And that was a big criticism of them yesterday, that they kicked too much attacking ball away. I think it's because when it slows down, they sort of, they don't really have much of an idea about how to get it going again. So they sort of, that they run out of ideas and Farrell thinks, right, well, let's, let's kick. Van Portfleet thinks, let's kick. Let's a bit of variety let's keep the defense on their toes whereas in actual fact with the with with a Billy Vunipola or with as we said somebody like Arundel on the wing who can bring something out of nothing there's a threat there there's more threats I just don't think they have enough ball carrying threats and that was shown by you know Lawrence has been excellent for Bath but as you said he's playing out of position for England when he was included yesterday it, there was a noticeable improvement and that's because th- th- you bring in ball carrying threats into that team, into a team that was lacking them, and suddenly it's mu- they're much, much more difficult to defend. Yeah, I wonder. I wonder how close Tom Willis gets. Um, we know Steve Borsick's a big fan, and there was a um, video sent around. I can't remember whether I mentioned it last week or not of his performance against Stad for Bordeaux, and he was throwing throwing defenders off him. Um, he's just. He's, he's skillful, like his like his brother Jack, and he's just that bit hefty, really good on his feet. If you remember how Alfie Barbary kind of burst on the scene, and he had that weird knack of being able to almost absorb tacklers, almost maybe take half a step back and then sort of shrug them off and carry on going. Tom Willis, there's a bit of that about Tom Willis. Um, whether he comes in for this Six Nations or ahead of the World Cup, I really wouldn't be surprised. And obviously, there's Mercer there too. Um, yeah, that that would be that would be an area where maybe looking to looking to freshen up and add those mm. Charles say that add that extra carrier. And what I would say as well is I don't think just for anybody listening who's thinking, you know, what's wrong with Alex Dombrand, I don't think he had a bad game yesterday per se. But but you know, as we as we continue to say to people, it's not necessarily about that. It's about is there better? You know, is there is there better out there to, to, to give England an option or in, in the areas in which they're weak? And I think there might be. There was nothing wrong with Alex Dombrandt's performance yesterday. He was he put in a perfectly respectable showing but is he the sort of correct number eight to sort of plug the gaps where England are struggling at the minute? And I'm, I'm not sure he is. 